Larry and Lori Eisenberg go out for this romantic boat ride to watch the sunrise. At some point during that boat ride, Larry goes overboard. It was, you know, it was the talk of the town. I mean, everyone was following this case. But weeks go by, and searchers still haven't been able to find Larry's body. Over the next uh, course of weeks, uh, we deployed a sonar boat, which did grid searches out on the lake in that area, you know, only to come up with nothing. A guy going overboard and not being found for weeks, that doesn't happen here. But it turns out, on the morning of the boat ride, Lori Eisenberg had made the front page of the local paper. That day, when they were going out on the water, um, there was an article that was coming out in the Coeur d'Alene Press that uh, tied Lori to a bunch of missing funds from this nonprofit. Hi, I'm Lori Eisenberg, Executive Director of the North Idaho Housing Coalition, and I'm very pleased to be with you. She knows it's going to hit the press, and, and, and she's not really going to be able to recover from this. The gig was up. Larry was going to find out. She knew that this would end their marriage. I'm Virginia Tate. I'm the certified fraud examiner working on behalf of the North Idaho Housing Coalition. There's over 33 credit cards involved. There's credit cards issued from North Idaho Housing Coalition to Lori's daughters. Uh, Larry Eisenberg has one, although I doubt that Larry knew that he had one. There are over a million dollars in transactions that weren't specifically authorized. Uh, Lori has transferred money out of the bank accounts. Police say the amount stolen added up to nearly $600,000. My name is Brady Reed. I'm currently a lieutenant with the Coeur d'Alene Police Department. So approximately a week after Larry Eisenberg's disappearance, I went to go meet with the North Idaho Housing Coalition board members uh, their attorney, and uh, also their financial accountant, uh, due to some reports of possible fraud being committed by Lori Eisenberg. To find out that Lori uh, could possibly be committing fraud and taking money from the business was totally shocking to them. In meeting with the coalition and finding out that the suspect was Lori uh, and knowing about the uh, fact that her husband went missing uh, prior, about a week prior to that, uh, of course it looks suspicious uh, in every way possible. Red flags start to show up left and right for sure. We went and served a search warrant on Lori's residence. Please search warrant. Please search warrant. Please search warrant. Sixteen one thousand. Seventeen one thousand. Eighteen one thousand. Come to the front door. Empty handed. Hands up. Please search warrant. Let's get hands. Thirty one thousand. Going in. So as we served the search warrant, Lori was present. Do you know any word on finding Larry? Are they, are they looking today? I know they couldn't look for a while, but are they back searching? The last time I talked to anybody from the sheriff's office, well, I talked to him today, but about that was yesterday, and they were still looking. We found Larry's wallet in a desk uh, with his IDs and all of his belongings. It, didn't make any sense to us because he was supposed to be supposed to have gone missing while he was on his boat uh, going to breakfast with Lori uh, and I don't know too many people who go to breakfast where he was going uh, without taking some method of payment. Why if he was taking Lori out to breakfast why would he leave his billfold behind? 
What do you got? It's called Bloody Glove. What? Bloody Glove. What? We had also found a bloody latex glove and a bloody tissue in one of the rooms near the back of the house. Hi. Lori here. Is it a lot of news or talking? I mean, um, she knows I'm coming. She does? Yeah. Not today, but she knew I was coming back, so. Sure. She said she's not up to it. Not up to it? But, yeah, she's just really struggling. Okay. Um, but obviously I can help facilitate. <laughs> I can't. I gotta talk to her, so if she doesn't want to talk to me... I mean, she said, can we reschedule, or...? Um, no. There she comes. Sorry about that. Hi, I'm back. Hi, I'm Steve. I, know, I don't know if you remember me from the other night. So, um, I would have liked to wait a few more days, but there's a lot of stuff going on in this case, and I need to talk to you. You don't have to talk to me if you don't want to, but... Um, I think I'm going to put you under arrest. And then what I told you um, is not a lie. I still want to talk to you. If you want to, I'd be glad to clear it up because you know what you did was wrong. Thanks. I'm going to put you in handcuffs here. Lori Eisenberg is arrested for theft. I'm being told to write your booking sheet out for one count of grand theft and 40 counts of forgery. So that's what you're going to be. They're all felonies, obviously. But as this investigation is taking place, a disturbing discovery back at Lake Coeur d'Alene. This person is reporting that they see what appears to be a body at the shoreline. Larry and Lori Eisenberg go out for this romantic boat ride. At some point during that boat ride, Larry goes overboard. We deployed a sonar boat only to come up with nothing. He's in the water. A guy going overboard and not being found for weeks, that doesn't happen here. Red flags start to show up left and right. Please search warrant. When you respond to these things, you question everything. There's over 33 credit cards involved, over a million dollars in transactions. The gig was up. Lori here. There's still a lot of questions. The person is reporting that they see what appears to be a body at the shoreline. Is this a murder? And who did it? Sex and Murder, new season, Sunday night at 10 on HLN. You know their names. Now see who they really are. I'm Donnie Wahlberg. Join me for a brand new season of Very Scary People this summer on HLN.